What's up everybody Karan here and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use the pressure sensitive stylus on your smartphone or your tablet as a pressure sensitive graphic tablet with your PC. In order to achieve this we are going to be using a software that is based on a client server model. So without any further ado let's get started. Alright so the software that you are going to be using is called virtual tablet from a developer sunny sites of a really great software. This software like I said is based on the client server model wherein you have one server application that will be running on your OS that is your windows or your mac and there will be one client application that will be running on your smartphone or your tablet. Unfortunately this app is not yet supported on iOS so you will not be able to use the apple pencil and the ipad pro as a graphic tablet using this software. But well this app is supported on all android phones and if your phone does not have a pressure sensitive stylus like the galaxy note 8 then you will only be able to use your phone like a touchpad. So let's jump into the pc and see what we gotta do ahead. Alright so now that I'm at my desk it's time to open up your favorite browser of choice and visit sunnysidesoft.com slash virtual tablet slash download. Uh, of course link to that will be in the description below. Alright so on this page you can see that uh, we have two sections one is client application that is for your tablet or your smartphone and one is server application that is for your PC. Now under client applications we have three options one is for your regular windows app that is if you have a surface app surface tab or something then next we have for android now for android there are two variants one is free one is paid the free one of course is going to have a lot of uh, ads on it and in my experience i have found that these ads interfere with your work area while you are using this app so i'd rather suggest go and buy this it's not that expensive and also yes it's a good app so well i have already downloaded it i'm going to show you how to do that on your phone open up play store and search for virtual tablet now you will find an application you will find two applications virtual tablet light in parentheses s pen and one will be virtual tablet s pen so this is the paid variant all right since now i have already installed this on my phone it's just giving me the option to open so once you are done downloading and installing it open up the app you will be greeted by this uh, pink red hybrid sort of screen it's a nice clean flat ui and here you have various options which we are going to look into further now it's time to go ahead and install the server application that is install the application on our pc so here too we have two options one is win virtual tablet server for windows and one for mac latest version links are given here uh, if you have windows make sure you have dotnet framework 4.0 or higher and uh, yes of course links to that will also be in the description below and if you have a Mac, make sure it's Mac OS 10.8 Mountain Lion or higher. Alright, so I'm using Windows. I'm gonna select this download link. If you have WinZip, then it will just, just select open with WinZip. And there's the setup file. So now I'm extracting the setup file. Okay, so it says virtual tablet server setup. Uh, you need not do anything. Just click on install. It will ask for administrative permissions. Just click on yes. It's a pretty safe app. Alright, so the setup is now initialized. It might take less time for you. Depends. I don't know why it took so much. So just click on next default location. Once again, next click install to begin. It's, it's a pretty fast installation. Uh, at the bottom after this setup is finished, they will give you an option to launch virtual tablet server. So check on that if you want to do it right now and click on finish. It says installation completed successfully. Okay. So here we have a virtual tablet server window. In this window, you can see there are two sections again uh, on the server status. We can see our server name. That is the name that I have assigned for my PC. We can see the server IP. This is my IP. I'm using a Wi-Fi router. Yes. Uh, make sure that if you are using Wi-Fi to connect, you are on the same LAN network. Also here we are seeing selected screen uh, because we want to run it on this display. This resolution is a full HD display so it's showing the proper resolution. Uh, Bluetooth not found because I do not have Bluetooth on my PC but if you are using a laptop it might show something here. Okay so it's pretty much showing that it's ready to connect. Here you can see help about and quit there's nothing to worry about. On this side we are seeing input mode that is pen or mouse. Now you can see that I'm using a Wacom tablet right here. I use it for all my editing uh, professional work and stuff. The major difference if you ever used 
this Wacom tablet or any graphic tablet for that matter is that it has four like four corners of this tablet are the four corners of your screen so wherever I place my stylus wherever I place my stylus that's the point where the cursor will be unlike mouse where you can just you know stay at one place and keep on dragging to reach the end or the sides so that's something that you have to experience if you have never done it but it's nothing much to worry about pressure sensitivity i'd prefer to keep at 0.2 cursor sensitivity i'd like to keep at minimum if i'm using a galaxy note 8 because it's a pretty small screen so the cursor is going to be really sensitive now it's time to head back again to my smartphone right here okay so my virtual tablet app is running it's connected to the same LAN and now I'm opening the Wi-Fi option. So select the Wi-Fi icon. Now it says one server found, right? If you have multiple computers, it will show multiple. If it's running on multiple PCs, but well, it says desktop. Yeah, IP address maps. It, it sums up pretty well. So I'm going to select this one. All right, and it's connected. So here you can see that my status has changed to connected. That's pretty much it for the pairing if you're using Wi-Fi. So go ahead in settings. You can select full screen mode, but if you select full screen mode, you can't properly use on the edge. So I tend to select 90% of the screen area. Uh, mirror mode if you wish to do that. I don't know why. And left hand mode if you are left handed. Now in input mode, you can see it says S Pen or Wacom Stylus. So that gives you some pressure sensitivity and also you have the option to use it as finger touch or capacitive stylus so no pressure sensitivity that is for all the standard smartphones without the S Pen or uh, a stylus all right so I'm gonna select S Pen Wacom stylus just gonna go ahead and remove my stylus okay right here place my phone over my tab now uh, whenever you are using a graphic tablet it's necessary that your phone is aligned to the screen like it should be this way perpendicular not this way not this way just perpendicular so it gives proper results okay let's go ahead and use it so now that I'm seeing on my screen my cursor has changed I am able to navigate properly first corner right you can see the mouse movement right here pretty well okay so now uh, in this type of stylus I have one button but this button is not really this button is not really usable so in case you want to do a right click you just hold down and it will give you this menu and you can select whatever you wish your right click option it's pretty much like a Wacom tablet okay so now that I have shown you how to connect it via Wi-Fi I'm also gonna show how to connect this via USB and in my opinion USB is a better alternative because if there is much heavier load on the Wi-Fi a lot of devices are connected sometimes the input might lag and you might not like the result even I don't all right so now again I'm at my virtual tablet uh, screen I'm going to select this USB option now in order to do this first there are some things that you need to do you have to enable developer options and you have to enable USB debugging on your smartphone that is if you are using a Galaxy Note 8 it's pretty simple just go into settings under settings you I have already enabled developer options you need to go in about phone software information and triple click or just constantly click on the build number now it says developer mode has already been turned on because it has been but in case you haven't done that you could do it here now go into developer mode turn it on from here okay and turn on usb debugging so i'll turn that on allow usb debugging okay now now that that's done i'll take Grab my USB cable. It's connected to my PC. Okay. So now that I have done, now that I have fulfilled all the requirements, virtual tablet is running on my PC. Developer options enabled. Uh, sorry, enabled. USB debugging is enabled and connected to PC with USB cable. Now click on connect. Uh, uh, it says connection failed. You can just say confirm. And on your PC, just click on refresh under the virtual tablet server. Okay, and now attempt to connect again and it will be connected. There's, it's it's pretty simple guys. Okay, so now that I have my 
new Wacom tablet here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and test it. This works pretty well. Mouse is running. Uh, right click. Action works well. So well, that's pretty much it for the pairing and the setup guys. It's pretty easy and if you have any doubts or if you are facing any issues, leave a message in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Alright, so now uh, that we have installed this on phone and now that our pairing is complete, it's necessary to test it out, right? We have to see how well the pressure sensitivity works. So for that, I'm going to head over to Photoshop and I'm just going to do a bit of some shading using a soft brush and just prove it to you that this indeed works well and the pressure sensitivity does work. So Photoshop is booting up. All right, so here's the Photoshop window. Let's go ahead, file, uh, new. Let me just create a thousand pixel by thousand pixel thing. Canvas, turn it all the way black. Layer. So guys, as you can see here, I, f I do a simple stroke very lightly, very light shade, a, a heavier stroke and an extremely heavier stroke. So it does make a difference. Even when using the eraser, you can see this is a very light application and a very heavy one. So I'm just going to put this drawing on time-lapse so you can quickly see how it does. I'm going to do this really quickly. Don't judge me for my painting. <laughs> All right, guys, so there you have it. I have done this shading to demonstrate that the pressure sensitivity indeed works very well. It works fairly well. Now it's not nearly as good as a Wacom tablet, but if you just want to use it for your hobby or you just find that you forgot your Wacom somewhere, or maybe you didn't carry it and you are with your laptop, you have your smartphone, you can definitely use this as a uh, sort of alternative to your Wacom tablet and it's really good like it impresses me how well such <laughs> this device can be used as a Wacom tablet so there you have it guys I have shown you how to install this on your server and client you now know what the client server model is uh, I've shown you how to pair them and also I have shown or demonstrated how we can use this with Photoshop you can even use this with any other Adobe app they have listed a few compatible Adobe apps on their website but I find that you can pretty much use it as a daily driver. I never use this mouse. I use my Wacom tablet for <laughs> as a mouse. So, well, you can do that. Of course, there are some bugs and issues with this app. So now I'd like to address them. So guys, this is a great system, but it's not too perfect. It has its own issues and it has its own bugs, but well, it does the job. So the first problem with this app is that the connection over Wi-Fi is a bit finicky, meaning that you will get sudden unexpected lags in your cursor input while using this over Wi-Fi network. It could be that if the Wi-Fi network is slow, the lags will be more prominent, but it has occurred with me once or twice. So yes, that is quite a possibility. Another issue is that uh, if you are using this app and you open your browser and you open a very large image on it, then the cursor unexpectedly starts to lag and it lags severely. So that is a big issue. So if you are using Photoshop and you just want to download stock images from Google or somewhere else, the cursor starts lagging. And the third issue is that you cannot use the buttons on your S Pen. There's no option for right click other than just tap and hold on your display. The Galaxy Note 8 has a pretty small display as compared to the Surface tablet. So if you were to use this app with a Surface Pen and a Surface Tab, I think you would get much better results. And yes, once you are done using this app, make sure that you terminate it from your taskbar because if you don't do it, it will stay running and it will block the input from other Wacom tablet if you connect it. So yes, that's one thing you have to take care of. All right guys, so that pretty much sums it up for this video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. If you did, hit that like button below. Subscribe if you aren't already. Turn on your post notifications to get updates on my latest videos. And well, if you have any queries related to this tutorial or pretty much anything related to tech, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below and I'll make sure that I reply as soon as I can.